प्रोग्रेसिंग आइडर एम्प्लॉयबल है या ऑन्ट्रप्रोनियर है या फिर उनके अपने में क्या ग्रोथ हुई है राइट देर सो मेनी थिंग्स विच इज जज बाय नैक वेन यू गेट एन एक्रिटेशन ओके द मेन इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज द क्वालिटी एस्पेक्ट सो वी डिफाइन क्वालिटी वॉट इज क्वालिटी क्वालिटी इज नेवर एन एक्सीडेंट इट इज ऑलवेज द रिजल्ट ऑफ हाई इंटेंशन सिंसियर अफर्ट इंटेलिजेंस डिरेक्शन एंड स्किलफुल एग्जीक्यूशन it represents the wise choice of many alternatives so quality can is not basically just quality is a subjective parameter so you always as assess it with some other thing ki this was the quality now the quality is this now the quality is this and obviously you have to do some benchmarking to ensure whether this level of quality is achieved or not okay so nag has defined set seven steps to quality quest for excellence understanding the concept action oriented learner centric approach innovation for change training to build competencies year round activity so these are the seven you can say steps to quality as described by nag this is just an overview of nag so ugc is an autonomous body which decided that we should have some form of assessment in case of higher education institutions like if we have institutions who in part ya who give degrees higher education institutions are there then in case to judge their quality or assess their quality ki how good their higher education is there should be some mechanism there should be some central ranking framework system so this started in the year 1986 they were all pondering that we should have some kind of a system which should judge or yeah, assess the quality of higher education institution so we commonly call it heis higher education institution like you people are giving degrees of mba mca so it's a higher education degree at hbtu we give degree at btech level and mtech level so it's higher education institutions okay so all these heis if we want to judge whether they are good degrees or not from this institution or that institution so they were pondering upon a mechanism so that is why this nag came into picture so in 1994 the nag was established and headquarters were of at bangalore this is the vision and mission of nag i just not read it's all available on the portal but vision i will definitely read to make quality that is why we said quality is very important you just make the students come sit study doesn't make much of a difference you want to actually your aim should be to impart the education in such a way that either they become employable or they become innovative or self employable something like that or even lifelong learning and a good human being so everything is covered in this nag you have to and also your infrastructure is important which it means that it should be towards self sustainability theek hai like green campus should be there reusable user uh, resources should be used solar energy should be used so all these things come under nag theek hai so mission is vision is to make quality the defining element of higher education in india through combination of self and external quality evaluation promotion and sustenance initiatives so it means that combination of self and external quality evaluation so first you have to do self evaluation whether you are justifiable while you are going in for nag you have to ensure that yes i am having that requisite quality so that we can now be judged by the external parameters तो पहले आपको अपने को जज करना है अपने सारे डॉक्यूमेंटेशन को कंप्लीट करना है तभी यू हैव टू गोइ फॉर द नैक प्रोसेस बिफोर यू गोइ फॉर आई आई क्यू एम वी टेन वॉट इज आई क्यू एंड ऑल उससे पहले आपको अपनी पूरी तैयारी करके रखनी है यू कैन नॉट जस्ट गेट इन टू नैक ऑब्वियसली यू एंड अप इन अ बैड ग्रेड सो इफ यू वॉन्ट अ गुड ग्रेड पहले आपको अपने लेवल पे पूरा आपका सेल्फ असेसमेंट करना है ठीक है सो दीज आर सर्टन मिशन स्टेटमेंट्स टू अचीव द विजन defined by nag okay so guided by its vision and mission statements the nag primarily focuses on assessment of the quality of hei that is higher education institute through an international internationally accepted method
thought methodology. So this methodology is accepted across the globe, not only in India, but also internationally. If your students are going for higher degrees, like masters and all abroad, if your university is NAC A plus or A or maybe A double plus, definitely they get an edge towards getting scholarships, towards getting uh, TAs, you can say teacher assistants and other things. So it adds to a lot of value to your institute or your university if it is NAC accredited with a good grade. Value framework. Now, throughout the world, we all know that the higher education pattern is dynamic in nature. It is not once you have defined a certain pattern or a curriculum, like MBA pattern. Suppose you are all MBA faculty members, so you have defined your MBA curriculum, right? But do do you expect that ten years what you define today after ten years also it will work? It will not because it is dynamically changing. World is changing progressively. Your pattern or your curriculum also has to be revised and re-looked at because higher education systems, socio-economic parameters, इतने होते हैं which comes into picture when you're imparting higher education. So since there is a dynamic change all the time, so you have to define your value framework accordingly. Okay. So core values in that are contributing to national development. Then fostering global competencies among students. Then inculcating a value system among students. Promoting the use of technology and quest for excellence. So each and every core value in itself is very very valid. If you go in and study one core value, it will have lot of meaning. First is contributing to national development. So you should have. Your curriculum, your design, in such a way that it should look at solving national problems. Okay, like we are imparting technical education. We do not want our students to only know the skill set in technical education. How our students can solve national problems? Like if we are producing civil engineers, what are they doing towards you know the infrastructure development nationally? All these things. So the curriculum has to be revisited. and we design all the time progressively so that we cater to these core values then fostering global competencies that your product product as in the university's product should be acceptable accepted globally that is very important then inculcating a value system it should not be that we are just uh, once the graduate has gone out he would be 21 22 year old probably once he goes out of your university Not only the skills which he has acquired, he should also be a good human being, having a good value system. That is also all covered here. That is one of the core values of NAC. Then uh, promoting the use of technology. Obviously, in the new uh, pattern which was adopted in 2019 by NAC, ICT, MOOCs, all these things were given lot of importance. इससे पहले भी नहीं था. ठीक है? Why? Because one of the core values was कि अगर टेक्नोलॉजी डेवलप हो रही है तो इट शुड बी यूज्ड बाय द ग्रेजुएट्स देन क्वेस्ट फॉर एक्सीलेंस वी ऑलवेज क्वालिटी इज अगेन अ जर्नी लाइक यू स्टार्ट टुडे यू हैव अचीव सम क्वालिटी पैरामीटर देन यू विल अगेन वॉक एंड यू विल गो हियर यू विल अगेन इट्स अ जर्नी जर्नी टुवर्ड्स व्हाट एक्सीलेंस यू वांट टू एक्सेल इन व्हाट एवर यू आर डूइंग राइट देन बेनिफिट्स ऑफ एक्रेडिटेशन we already discussed it i just go through it uh, in quickly is in when you have a nice grade jab aapko ek acha grade milta hai accreditation milta hai what does it signify it signifies that the institution has grown in strength weakness and opportunities and challenges through informed review process like i suppose i am in the peer team i come and review you so i will judge your strength also i will judge your weakness opportunity everything and challenge also so now through informed process you know where you have where you can convert the challenge to a opportunity mein kaise convert kar sakte ho theek hai then weakness ko aap kaise uh, challenge opportunity mein convert kar sakte ho and your strength kaise banaoge usko so through this process you are informed and then you have a set pattern that when you go in second cycle what are your weaknesses and how you can improve upon them okay then internal areas for planning and resource allocation you will also be informed about 
where you can do more planning, where you can generate more resources. All the time, funds will not be available from your management. So you have to also work as a faculty member of that university or the institute to generate resources. So you can write projects, you can collaborate with other agencies, you can collaborate with industries that they give you sponsor for seed money project so that you are generating resources for your university or institute as well as for yourself, for your better way. Okay. Then funding agencies look for objective data, initiating innovation and modern methodology of pedagogy means you cannot be complacent with the simple ways of teaching which you are doing all the time. You also have to review because nowadays the students have become very smart and very savvy. You cannot just make them sit or chop or just say normally in pedagogy follow karteo. With that, they will never be interested in your class. The pattern would be that they are forcedly sitting or they are not attending the classes. So, what innovative methods you can use? Collaborative kind of teaching, flipped classrooms, experiential learning, some kind of project mechanism, case studies. There are so many things which you have to innovate to engage the students. Because engagement of students is very, very important. If they are not engaged in your class, the outcome will be just zero. Because we are all following which pattern of pedagogy nowadays in higher education? OBE. That's outcome-based education. Okay. So outcome-based education is student-centric. It is not teacher-centric anymore. Initially, it was teacher-centric. At higher education level, so it was all the time teacher-centric. I will design the curriculum, I will teach accordingly, I will set the paper, I will evaluate, everything was my, if it is autonomous body, then it is my, everything is under my control. But now this is no more the situation. We have to inculcate this habit of getting the Bloom's taxonomy in place. Bloom's taxonomy is the learning levels. There are K levels, K1 to K6, like right from understanding level to create level. So, we have to educate right from first year to educate the student that he will understand, remember, once he is a graduate, he has the habit of creating, analyzing, evaluating, creating. That learning level, that best for learning,